Okay, friends, let me turn to my first guest, um, who, curiously enough, I don't think I've ever met um, yet. I've known about her for some time. Very happy to meet her today, uh, Sundal Roy, uh, who is a um, becoming uh, fast becoming an icon in the truth uh, <coughs> movement. Please excuse me. I've got a bit of a bug in my throat. Uh, a Himalayan a Kriya yogi, an oracle, and quantum uh, field worker. She teaches inner alchemy and sacred sexuality, amongst other topics concerning the ascension of humankind. Uh, some of you will chortle at that, no doubt. Um, I don't chortle at that. This is the language we have to be speaking now. We have to all entrain our language into the mechanics of ascension and start to take these subjects very, very seriously indeed. Uh, Sundal has been an international model for almost two decades and can speak directly to what she's seen in the industry surrounding the sexualization of, of children. And she works one-on-one uh, -on -one with clients and teaches an intensive uh, 10 <coughs> session coursework on the ancient and mystical tradition of Himalayan uh, Kriya Yoga called Reclaim Your Crown, which can help people detox their emotional body, open up energy channels, improve manifestation, and step into personal power and sovereignty. Sundar, I'm very happy to see you meet you tonight. Hi, Sasha. How are you doing? Happy to see you. What's the time where you are? Um, I think it's one o'clock or just gone one o'clock, one fifteen maybe. Oh, yeah. very good. Like I said, I'll be with you probably a bit later than this time tomorrow. I'll be in Mexico City as well. I don't think we'll yeah. get to see each other. Now, you're a successful internationally recognized model and have been in the industry for many years. Um, so you've undoubtedly seen um, plenty of questionable behavior, as I did in rock and roll when I was very close to the modeling industry. And because um, they're very, as you know, parallel industries. You talk about specific boundaries that you have for yourself. Um, so there are choices those in the industry can make. And the recent choice by Balenciaga and their designers obviously uh, pushed most people's tolerance uh, to the limit. So how is it that something actually got so entrenched and got this far in in four years of modeling have you seen anything to this extent and can you tell us your thoughts on this particular meme of the balenciaga saga and any experiences you've seen or had related to the sexualization of children um so luckily i haven't uh, witnessed anything quite as bad as the balenciaga campaign with the children and the bdsm setup and all of that um I, I think that there's, I think for a high profile brand like Balenciaga, I can under, not understand, but I can see how certain creatives didn't feel like they had the power to speak up or to walk off set or to say, this is not appropriate because, you know, I mean, I'm sure you saw the last two years of, over the pandemic, people are not very good at speaking up even when they know something is wrong. Um, so I'm fortunate enough that I only got into the industry once I was already an adult, but a lot of people don't realize that in major modeling markets like London, New York, etc., a lot of fashion models are recruit recruited while they're still children. So they generally start around 13, 14, and then they're kind of sent out to photographers to shoot and they're kind of groomed to become high-end fashion models so that by the time they're 16 or 18, they're already very comfortable in front of the camera and very experienced. Um, because once you're 22 or 23, you're kind of considered old news, you're an old maid, um, and a lot of models will actually self-retire at around 25, 26, because they believe that they're too old for the industry. Now, thankfully, that's been changing a lot since Me Too. Um, the industry has become a lot more diverse and kind of represents older models. I myself am 37 now. I'm, just, I'm still working just as much as I ever did. Um, but I want to share a story in particular that was shared by a model called Leanne Maskell, who wrote a book called The Model Manifesto, an Anti-Exploitation Guide to the Industry. And she shares a story of how she was involved in a fashion show somewhere in the UK. Um, and this was nowadays models over the age of 16 can't, cannot participate in, in runway shows in the UK. It's illegal. But back, it, back then it was perfectly fine for models 13, 14 to do runway shows for adult fashion, high end fashion. And she said that it was perfectly common to be at these shows and there's photographers backstage, you know, capturing behind the scenes. And she said that every time the models would get undressed start getting undressed the photographers the backstage photographers would just go crazy and these are underage girls these are children and these photographers are sexually predating on them 
and trying to get pictures of them undressing. And this was just considered fine and acceptable. And, and nobody in the industry, none of the makeup artists, stylists would speak up against this type of behavior until Me Too. So, you know, the industry has a, a huge problem with sexually predating on models. And considering that so many models are underage, that is a huge issue with the sexualization so, of children. So do you, do you think a lot more fashion houses and, and even model agencies are gonna start tanking? Um, but I don't think so. I don't think that they're going to start tanking, but I think that if they do want to survive, they're going to have to get rid of some of the more nefarious elements. Um, I mean, they're already since Me Too, they started cleaning up the industry and kind of outing some of the worst offenders when it comes to sexual predation. Yeah. Um, so that's definitely going to have to continue. And well, so my, 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 my concern then, the reason why I asked the question is because um, I happen to know that Harvey Weinstein was not the bad guy in Hollywood. And I, I made this quite clear um, in, in a broadcast last week, and I spoke at some length on this particular subject. Um, but Harvey Weinstein um, is, is, is a character who is loathsome uh, to most people with any moral sensibility, obviously. But he's not a hard and fast criminal. And, and he's depraved, yes, if, 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 his, if his behavior is anything to go by. But... My contention is, and I happen to know I'm right on this because I'm, I know characters and players and actors in that in that theater, so to speak, in Hollywood, that when they set fire to Harvey Weinstein, it was because he was an easy target. Um, he was this kind of grotesque figure who'd conflated himself through self-aggrandizement, running after chicks around the around the, the the casting couch and acting in a puerile fashion for many, 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 many years, as did many of the great icons who to this day are the greatest AAA celebrity uh, icons in Hollywood. But their names were not brought forward, Harvey's was, he was set on fire. And that's because he wasn't, by best accounts, one of the child ritual satanists and the, and, and the really nasty sacrificial ritualists and there are those characters in hollywood and in the modeling industry and in the rock and roll industry um that were rearranging the furniture whilst they set fire to these other icons like harvey weinstein so that's really my concern and that's yeah. why i asked do you think the balenciaga is the blunt end of the edge of the sword or the sharp edge um, it's yeah, it's definitely possible. I mean, I've been I, I've not witnessed any kind of the, the you know, SRA or anything like that in the, within the fashion industry. But that's because I think that there's levels to it and there's a spectrum. So you're obviously not going to witness that if you're somebody who doesn't, you know, if you're not down with that kind of thing, people and I've, I've been I've been a person who's, you know, spoken truth about many subjects for many years. So, you know, I don't know who those players are necessarily. I think it's definitely possible that they will allow people like Demna, who's, the, you know, the creative director at Balenciaga and Lotto Volkova and these people who are more open about what they're into take the fall for people who are more nefarious. That's, that's right. for sure. Right. Um, but I, that's where it's on the public to, you know, continue the conversation and to keep digging and to insist that we investigate anybody who has aroused any suspicion or yeah. who had any kind of accusation of being involved in satanic circles, for yeah. sure. And, and, and speaking about the, I mean, I remember, I remember in, in my rock and roll years, my PR agent was good friends, were close friends with the Jelaine Maxwell. And Jelaine would turn up to the parties. There were always model parties. And, yeah. and, and um, I didn't personally see anything nefarious, but I was famous in those in the, that rank and file for never having even puffed marijuana. So I was just a complete green gill. Um, even you know, when I retired, I'd still to this day, I've never participated in alcohol or drugs. So I was always kept out of the, the back room and never saw anything nefarious. I just know that those characters, even then in the 90s and, and were prevalent. They were there doing their thing. They were trawling and they were scouting quite clearly. Now I can see that. Mm -hmm. um, as far as Balenciaga is concerned, what what do you think it will take for the world to finally wake up to these horrors? And and more to the point, the broad scale issue of what you call, I think, um, infantilization of women, but certainly the sexualization of infants. That is obviously the bigger the bigger concern. 
Um, what yeah. do you think it's going to take? It's not going to just end with Balenciaga revelation no. because we've still got the big players out there doing their thing. For sure. I, I, I mean, when I made the initial video um, about the Balenciaga, which I've now done an update, I initially thought that this whole Balenciaga thing would blow over, that people would dismiss it as a, another right-wing conspiracy theory. But from, <laughs> I've been following, um, you know, fashion commentators this whole week, seeing what everybody is saying, and I feel like this could actually be you know, quite a crucial point of unraveling of this whole thing, because even a lot of people who haven't made conspiratorial content are now looking at the campaign and saying that, that, that this is, that they're putting subliminal messages alluding to, you know, Charlie and Peter and that it's really sickening. And it's kind of people opening people's eyes up to the ways in which these people operate. You know, they, right. they would say that symbolism will be their downfall. And yeah. It seems like the symbolism is now staring people quite squarely in the face to the point where people that I didn't think would actually be taking this seriously are actually making content on YouTube and posting it for their audience and their audience who are, you know, not, it's not, these are not conspiracy YouTube channels. These are mainstream fashion, luxury, you know, uh, you know, influencers and their audience are all completely sickened like the, the comments I'm seeing it's really encouraging to see how many people are actually waking up to this and they're also making the connection between the Balenciaga scandal and Epstein because you know there, there's a um, there's a there's a crossover with the casting director Rachel Chandler who that's um, right yeah so she's a, she's a casting director for Balenciaga and many other major shows and you know she she's been on the plane she's been on the island mm. she posted about going to epstein's island and bragging about it so definitely there's a very problematic link there so people are definitely starting to make the connection yeah that that's fantastic stuff and that that's not that's going to continue unabated that investigation yeah. looking into these these more marginal characters who are going to be exposed you think about the podesta uh, John Podesta and the Podesta brothers and their filthy art collection. Remember that around the Clinton Obama administrations, when yeah. Podesta was one of the most powerful people in in U.S. Uh, politics and policy. I mean, extraordinary. And these people were palpably, patently involved in in all sorts of nefarious activity with uh, with infants. Um, yeah. So that that stuff is yet to really surface. Uh, even the Epstein stuff is only now beginning to, by best accounts, uh, be trawled out of the out of the basement, courtesy of some decent judges who are ordering uh, the disclosure. Are you following any of that? Yeah, for sure. And I, I think that this is going to, the Balenciaga thing is going to cause a lot of people who had previously dismissed Gates to now look, look into it, especially with the symbolism and the artwork. There's a lot of parallels. So, you know, like one of my, um, my friends commented when I, on the Balenciaga thing, that the drips are beginning to pour. And I think yeah. it, it's gonna it's gonna become a raging torrent anyway. I'm 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 pretty optimistic that it will, especially now, as you said before, with you know Musk taking over Twitter and the narrative changing and some of those ac accounts that were previously shadow banned and suppressed Indeed. will start to come to the forefront. I also thought it was interesting how the YouTube algorithm was showing me all the Balenciaga videos at the top of my suggested because I feel like normally I would have expected them to suppress that, but they haven't been. Well, I mean, Kyle Kemp, who's coming on later, will be able to ex probably explain more about how those those bots and algorithms work that are kind of data mining even in the background whilst you're walking around your living rooms and talking to your pet you yeah. know, budgery guy. <laughs> yeah. These bots are picking up your syntax and converting it into, into images and advertisements. It's extraordinary. Yeah. <laughs> um, I want to I want to just close with you with a little bit of few minutes on what it is that you're doing with the Kriya yoga and, and what we can loosely um, coin as sacred sexuality. My own audience um, will be familiar with a very dear and long-standing friend of mine, the great tantric Amago Anand. So I've done a, at least a dozen broadcasts on the subject over the last few years, but interested to know what it is that you're doing with Kriya yoga and how this application um, can really do something substantive with respect to healing that kind of genera, gener, generational and cultural trauma connected to 
fractured sexuality that we suffer from as a civilization. Yeah, so uh, Himalayan Kriya Yoga is a very, very powerful modality where we use Kriyas, which are kind of like dynamic movements of tapping and then breath work to detox the physical body and the emotional body of traumas and, you know, negative belief systems. So as you purge out the body of trauma, then you can, then we also sublimate the, the sexual energy, the Kundalini from the lower centers and start to connect it up to the heart because so many people have their, um, their sacral, their womb or, you know, their sexual centers and their heart, the, the kind of light body architecture is severed um, and disconnected. And, and that's been, you know, I believe a deliberate attempt to, invert our sexuality so that they can kind of you know infect humanity with these kind of distortions and perversions so as we start to connect the sexuality to the heart then we you know are much more able to come into sacred sexual uni unification not just with ourselves but also with god with the divine and then also with a um with a beloved a singular beloved in kind of hierogamic which means sacred union you know love making um, so yeah, it, it works on multiple levels. It works on the physical body, the emotional body and the causal body and removes a whole body of, you know, different traumas to do with anger, to do with victimization, to do with betrayal, abandonment, and just rewires your whole system. So yeah, it's a very, very powerful modality. Beautiful. And where do, where do you take it yourself from here? How, how, how are you getting your coursework out? Is there a big uptake? Are you seeing an increase in the uptake? Oh, in terms of people signing up? Yeah, generally, yes. like it's, the, the response has been really, really good. And everybody who's done the course has, you know, the feedback that I'm getting is just incredible. So, you know, I've, I've been a little bit busy, but I will be adding all the testimonials to the sales page so that people can see what kind of results others have been getting from the modality. It's been a very closely guarded system in terms of like yogic line lineages for a long time. Um, because I think they didn't want it to get over commodified and commercialized. But I think at this time that, you know, of great change that we're at, you know, it's that they, 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 my my yogi is my my guru, sorry, is wanting, you know, more and more people to have access to this kind of ascension technology and healing technology. Beautiful. What yeah. What is the website or where can people find you? Um, so it's reclaimyourcrown.thinkific.com. So I'm, I'm being hosted on Thinkific, or they can just head to my Instagram and go to the link tree. There's a link in the link tree where they can access the sales page. Okay. I've just, just stuck it on your name there, so your moniker, so people can see it there, reclaimyourcrown.com. Beautiful. Sundal, thank dot you very thinkific. much for joining us. Yeah, dot .thinkific.com. Dot, dot what? Forgive me? Dot .thinkific. <laughs> How do you, Joanne, you should be doing this, not me. Dot, <laughs> to me, dot what? Dot thinkific.com. I don't know what, what you're saying, so I can't pick, pick think up. Thinkific, it's, it's an online course prep platform called Thinkific. T H I N K. Yeah, I F I C. I would never have guessed that. Okay, great stuff. Thank you. <laughs> no so problem. there you have it, friends. Um, take a look at that. Boom. Um, you can jot that down. Sundal, is there anything else that you wanted to impart before we part ways? No, I think we've I think we've covered it all. Thank you so much for having me on the show. Very, very grateful for your for your insights and uh, wishing you much happiness uh, through through the Christmas and into the new year. Hope to bump into you. And on, I know that uh, you met your partner at at uh, my my place in in Bali. You just Bali. told me. Yeah, exactly. I'm very happy very happy to hear that you've been there to the to the New Earth Haven. Yeah. Good, good stuff. Lovely meeting you. Take Thank care. you, Sundar. Bye. God bless.